For MMA fighters, the next fight is always the biggest and most important fight of their career, no matter what the circumstances are. But for Aljamain Sterling, heading into another title defense at UFC 288, this is for real the biggest fight of his life because it has the possibility of making more of an impact on his career than any of his previous contests. That is because if he's to beat Henry Cejudo this weekend, he's going to finally get the proper respect he deserves. A win over Cejudo at UFC 288 will be the beginning of Sterling finally capturing that championship aura that has eluded him all of this time. He should already have that level of reverence given what he's accomplished, but the reality is that he doesn't. Despite the fact that he has two title defenses against two of some of the most popular and respected bantamweights on the planet, he just doesn't get the appreciation that a UFC champion typically receives. No doubt it all goes back to his championship brain getting off on the wrong foot because of how he came to get the title wrapped around his waist in the first place. The first victory over Piotr Jan was just unfortunate, no matter which way you fold it. Because not only did he get blasted straight to the head with an illegal knee, the subsequent disqualification that led to an automatic victory left a lot of fans resenting him for gaining the title that way. Which isn't fair to all, Joe, but hey, that's life. And I can live with the fact that the fans reacted to the situation the way they did. Although it wasn't Sterling's fault, that's no way for a championship to change hands. And having an understanding of how the MMA fan base is, the general reaction wasn't surprising in any way, and certainly understandable. But you'd think that after coming back a year later, after a major neck surgery, and to go on to beat Piotr Jan fair and square would undo the bad taste in fans' mouths, and permit Sterling to be viewed with the same type of reverence that Jan enjoyed when he was the champion. But it didn't. Aljo certainly came away from that fight being viewed a lot more favorable than he was prior, but he still didn't come away from that fight with the esteem of a UFC champion. Even after he got TJ Dillashaw out of there in two rounds for a second title defense, although it was his first true title defense in a lot of fans' eyes, he still emerged out of that contest without the championship luminosity. This time, it was the fact that Dillashaw's long, troubled shoulder gave out that Sterling had to leave the octagon with the belt, but without the radiance of a champion. But for his fight this weekend, I believe with every fiber of my being that if Aljo can emerge victorious at UFC 288, he's finally going to get his due from the MMA community. This is large in part because he's going up against someone who's had the total opposite luck when it comes to fans' perspective. Cejudo attained the complexion of a champion the moment he captured UFC gold. And in a very rare occurrence, it almost feels as though his popularity and his appreciation amongst the fan base has almost grown from his time away from the sport over the past few years. Which is surprising because that's not often the case. Time off usually doesn't do well for a fighter's profile, but for Cejudo, the time away seems to have served him quite well. For me, the king of cringe thing, even if it was intended to be slapstick or ironic, was never funny or entertaining. But I think the time away from the sport and the calming down of that gimmick endeared him to the fan base a little bit. I also think he scored big PR points by getting credit for being a very respected coach amongst some of the greatest fighters on the face of the planet which is totally earned, and he deserves everything that he has based on that alone. So although he's been away for a long time, I really believe a victory over Cejudo is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back and gives way to the rightful treatment of respect from the fan base that Sterling really deserves. And luckily for Aljo, I believe the stars are aligning for him to be victorious at UFC 288, and that he has a really good chance to finally realize that championship treatment. I feel strongly about this for a few reasons, and this is in no way to take away from Zahudo. That man is a champion through and through no matter what happens on Saturday night. But there are a couple things to bear in mind here. The bantamweight division of 2023 is a very different place than it was in early 2020 when Zahudo left. And three years is an eternity in this sport. When Cejudo departed in 2020, it came right at the time when the bantamweight division was really starting to heat up with some of the biggest talents just coming down the pipe. I'm not implying that he ran from that or wouldn't have faced any and all comers if he remained active, but I am saying that we have not seen him compete in this division since it's become the most talent-rich weight class in the sport. I also believe that when you take a look at his resume and look at who he beat and when he beat them, he had timing on his side in that he did not get most of those guys when they're in their prime. His last three wins came against three top talents who I believe were on the decline when he faced them. If Cejudo were to fight a prime Dominic Cruz or a prime TJ Dillashaw, do you think he wins? I personally don't think he does. And after being away from competition for three years, which, as I said, is an absolute eternity in this sport, to take on an ultra-confident Aljamain Sterling is a very tall order. So much respect to the Olympic gold medalist for stepping up. Aljo was on the MMA Hour this week with Ariel Helwani, and in the interview, he was forthcoming about being frustrated with the fans' reaction to him over the years. He went on to talk about how, even after he beats Henry Cejudo this weekend, that people are still going to be making excuses to not give him credit, citing Cejudo's layoff as being one of the excuses. But I really don't think that's going to be the case this time. 
If Aljo goes out there and gets the win at UFC 288, he'll not only set the record for the most wins in UFC bantamweight division history, but he'll also finally get over that hump and be fully immersed in UFC champion aura.